joining us, Frank. So how are the Netherlands doing it? How are they the world leaders in fresh food transport and innovation? Well, perhaps, uh, first of all, it's important how we organize ourselves. We do that in a structure that we call the triple helix, meaning that government, uh, companies, so business, and research institutes come together, sit around the table, talk about how they best can organize the production and transport of agricultural products. From there, a lot of innovative ideas are uh, launched and then in the end also uh, uh, put into practice. Are you able to give us any examples of this innovation? 20 years ago in the Netherlands, there was this idea that we would double our production, but also half the water and the energy that the, we would use for that production. In the greenhouses, some very innovative technologies were developed. 20 years ago, we needed 22 liters of water for uh, one kilogram of tomatoes, and now we only need four. What is the Netherlands doing to aid and attract this innovation? We try to create a, a context, a surroundings, where those companies feel at home in the sense that they can make a good profit, uh, that they find a structure where they can uh, do research and development. And as a third element, we have a very well-educated uh, workforce. How are the Netherlands attracting talent and what are the universities doing to facilitate this innovation? Our science has always been very internationally oriented. The outstanding example is the University of Wageningen and it has such a good reputation uh, because it's already been working around the world on agricultural production, coming up with all kinds of innovative ideas and then students want to be part of that. With the triple helix, does everyone have an equal say? How does it work? Well, the general idea of putting people around the table is typically Dutch, which goes back centuries. We always work from the idea that nobody has all the solutions. So you need each other to come up with solutions. And from that perspective or from that uh, attitude, you know, people are mostly pretty open to the ideas and suggestions of others. And then, you know, something beautiful can blossom up, so to speak. What do the Netherlands do to organise transport and what could we learn and incorporate here in Australia? When uh, agricultural products come either by lorry uh, or by train, for example, to the port of Rotterdam or to Schiphol Airport, Amsterdam, when the train comes in, it's being unloaded, you know, very quickly and then up in the air and to the consumers. What I think Australia can learn is uh, this very strict planning and organization that we do with regard to an agro hub, so that when we transport the agricultural products, that it's unloaded quickly into the plane and up in the air to the point of destination. Talk us through the urban regional divide in the Netherlands. The Netherlands is very small and when you look at where the greenhouses are mostly located, uh, there's always a big city nearby. So also culturally, there's not a, a that big divide as you might expect in bigger countries. Uh, so in that sense, it helps us to introduce innovations from university uh, uh, into agricultural production because people are open for it. They've studied at universities themselves. So in that sense, that divide that you talk about, we still have it in the Netherlands, of course, but it's not that big. In Australia, there's a lot of pressure from consumers around how the different production systems operate. Are you finding there's that same pressure in the Netherlands? Absolutely. Most of the people in the Netherlands find it very important because they do not only want to eat healthy, but they also want to eat products that are environmental friendly. Over the past few years, we have made quite some steps. Uh, and I think there, uh, that is also a reason why our export is pretty big. 
for a small country, but is also very well accepted by the whole population because it's all done in a sound and, as I said, uh, environmental friendly way. Do you have any advice for people that are looking at what the Netherlands are doing and thinking, we should go Dutch? Well, we don't have all the solutions. We can learn from the Australians also. We are happy to learn from the Australians also. And if we make a combination, uh, we can encourage business to cooperate in our two countries. Thank you, Frank. Thank you so much.